system. There are several ways to diagram the financial system. One of the ones that I like has four primary components. The first component is the suppliers of capital. Suppliers of capital are people that have excess money that they want to invest for a given time period. It can be individuals, it can be businesses, it can be governments. For example, somebody that's saving for retirement is going to be a supplier of capital. Somebody or a business that has a little excess cash that time period is going to be a supplier of capital. So a supplier of capital is anybody that's putting money into the financial system. Typically those are people that have excess cash flows at this time period that they don't want to spend. They want to spend them at some later date. So they want to find some way to save or invest that capital at the moment. On the other side, we have demanders of capital. Demanders of capital are people that have a need for additional money this time period. Again, it could be individuals, somebody buying a new car. It could be businesses, some business that wants to open a new warehouse somewhere or open a new production facility, could be a restaurant opening a new restaurant somewhere. They're going to need excess capital this time period so they would be a demander of capital. Quite often the US federal government acts as a demander of capital issuing treasury bills and treasury bonds because the revenues coming in in the form of taxes are less than the money that the government's spending this time period. So the purpose of the financial system is to move capital over from the suppliers of capital to the demanders of capital as efficiently as possible. And there are two primary routes that that might take. The first be the financial markets. Financial markets are things like the stock market or bond market places where people can sell financial securities or buy financial securities. And typically what happens is the demander of capital, let's use the example of the federal government, they might want to be financing the current budget deficit and so they might have to issue some 10-year treasury bonds to do that. They would sell those securities in the financial market so they would send securities to the financial markets those securities would be purchased by the suppliers of capital this could be an individual looking to save some money for retirement and in exchange when the supplier of capital purchases the security they have to send capital or cash into the financial markets which is going to go over to the demander of capital. So we have a situation where the securities flow through the financial markets from demanders of capital to suppliers of capital and the capital flows from the suppliers of capital into the financial markets to the demanders of capital. And I talked about treasury bonds Another example would be maybe I want to sell 100 shares of Toyota stock that I had purchased earlier. If I do that, I'm selling the shares, so right now I'm a demander of capital. I'm sending those securities into the financial markets. There's going to be some other investor that's buying those securities. They will send the cash over and ultimately it will end up into my account. Financial markets work well when we have certain situations. One is we need homogeneous securities. What we mean by that is the securities have to be standardized. So in my Toyota example, it doesn't matter which particular shares of Toyota stock I'm selling, all shares of Toyota stock are the same. So anytime I wanna sell 100 shares of Toyota or 100 shares of Walmart, every share is the same. The person purchasing those shares doesn't need to investigate me as the seller to know what they're getting. As long as they understand the security, they don't have to worry about who the seller is, who the demander of capital is in that transaction. Another important thing has to be that there are many buyers and sellers at all points in time. 
and the financial markets typically work very well for this, especially when we talk about stocks and bonds. For example, in the brokerage account I use, my broker offers a two second guarantee. If they can't sell that stock within two seconds, they're going to refund the commission that they charge me. In the years that I've been trading, I have gotten a refund once on that transaction and the transaction took something like three or four seconds instead of two seconds. Almost every transaction is done almost instantaneously because there's always somebody on the other side willing to buy those shares of stock. So we have many buyers and sellers in the financial markets and we have homogeneous securities and that makes transactions very simplified. Some transactions do not meet those requirements and they tend to go through financial intermediaries. Financial intermediary is a company like a bank. Maybe it could be a life insurance company or a mutual fund. It could be a credit union. A financial intermediary steps into transactions where we don't have homogeneous securities and we may not have many buyers and sellers. For example, let's take a look at an auto loan. If I want to borrow $20,000 for a car loan, I can't go into the financial markets for that. There's not somebody waiting to buy that car loan. And also, my car loan is very different from everybody else's. My credit rating is going to be a little bit different. The terms that I'm looking at, the car that's backing that up as collateral is a little different. So everything varies. It doesn't work well in the financial markets. Instead, we need a financial intermediary, like maybe a bank. So in this case, I'm borrowing the money from the bank. The security that I'm issuing to the bank is that loan agreement. In exchange, they're sending me the capital. The money is flowing to me so I can buy that new car. Now the question is, where does the bank get its money? It's over here in the suppliers of capital. Suppliers of capital are getting a security in exchange for providing capital to the bank so it can make loans. Now, big difference here versus the financial markets, the security flowing into the financial market was typically the same as the security flowing out. In the financial intermediary, the security flowing in is often very different than the security flowing out. For example, in my car loan, the suppliers of capital aren't directly buying the car loan. Instead, they may have checking accounts or savings accounts or certificates of deposit at their bank. Those are the securities that they are getting from the financial intermediary in exchange for capital. So the financial intermediary is changing over the types of securities that it is giving to suppliers of capital and those are different from the securities receiving from the demanders of capital. Financial intermediaries, as I mentioned, work well under situations where we have non-standardized transactions where the issuer is important. For example, my car loan is very different than somebody else's. Also, we have to have a situation where the size of the transaction tends to be much smaller. If we look at car loans or home loans, they're typically in the 10 to 20,000 range for car loans, maybe in the 100,000 range, 200,000 range for a home loan or even less. When we're talking in the financial markets, we're typically looking at tens of millions, hundreds of millions, in some cases billions of dollars in the transactions flowing through the financial markets, at least as far as the overall size of the security. So here we had the homogeneous security, here we have non-homogeneous securities. We also typically have a transformation going through in the time to maturity, the risk level, something like that. My car loan is riskier than the checking account that the person's getting here. My car loan may be for four years. The person in their savings account or buying a bank CD may be looking at putting their money in for six months or one year.